buy what? Watch. Or what you got? Rolex. Genuine thing. Yeah, let's have a look. That's not real, that. Yes, comes with the box and the guarantee. How much you want? 50 quid. Seems a good deal for a real Rolex. Genuine thing. What if it's not real? I'm here every day. Come back tomorrow. Guaranteed, 100%. Give you the money back. Now you might be thinking, and quite rightly so, surely he couldn't be that gullible, right? But the fact is, these replicas are getting better and better all the time. And, <laughs> well, not this one, but some of these copies are becoming very difficult to distinguish from the originals, especially those so-called super clones. And no, I have no interest in featuring those on this channel. But this is a poor quality replica. It wouldn't fool many people. However, it can happen. So what's the purpose of this video? Well, we'll get to that. But for now, let's take a closer look at this 100% genuine Bolex and give you an idea of what you'd be getting if you attempted to shell out your hard-earned cash for one. And just for the record, I really do not advise that you do. But let's strip this down and see what gremlins we can find. And the first thing we notice is that the movement, although mechanical, is a very cheap Chinese manufactured automatic movement. Well, there's no surprises there. It's very similar to the movement that we found in the Starking watch that we looked at a little while back. There's a link in the description to that video. But looking at the performance, it seems pretty decent. However, it's not all roses, as you'll see shortly. And here we have the obligatory fingerprints as found in many of these movements. And here we are, the movement is literally swamped with oil. Parts are actually sticking to each other. You will notice this throughout the movement, and I'll give my thoughts on this shortly.
Now I'm just letting the power down from the mainspring. And removing the main bridge, we can see a nice strip of metal. This may well have eventually found its way into the train of wheels and the watch would have stopped. And here we have some more debris. Now this coupled with the lashings of oil found around the movement, and as you'll see soon, almost zero oil for the wheel pivots, it all tells me that this was assembled by hand and then placed in a cleaning machine whole and swished around a bit. There are products available that clean and lubricate at the same time, and I suspect that may be what was used here. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. But yes, when putting hundreds or thousands of these movements through the same fluids, there's no surprise that these movements do get contaminated. It doesn't take a lot to jam up these movements, and so that's why I'd guess that they have quite a high fail rate. But anyway, that's it stripped down. I'll clean and rebuild it, just for shizzles and giggles.
Now with it cleaned and lubricated, it's not really performing much better. However, it's probably more likely to perform for longer. But enough of that, let's finish putting this thing back together. And that's it, back like new. But what was the point of the video? Well, there wasn't one really, to be honest. Except I was bored. I just really wanted an excuse to use my angle grinder on something. 